bless you right now. God, we ask you to do miracles in this place, oh God. You are the miracle working, God. Move in your power. You see somebody beside you with their hand raised, just lay hands on them. Pray for them. And while you got your hands raised, pray for each other. Let's ask God to do a miracle. God, touch my brother Simba right now in Jesus' name. Bring healing to his body and strength to his body, Lord Jesus. Right now, Jesus, do a miraculous work in my brother, Lord. Oh, God, move with this place. We need you. We need you. We need you, Jesus. We need you. Run, jump pews, it 
don't matter. If you need to get here, you get here right now. But there's somebody toting some baggage that they need to lay down. And when I say lay down, you bring it up here. And you lay it down. And you walk away. Because he don't want you to take it back when you put it down right here. It's over when you put it down right here. But you got to get here to find it. I've been in this situation where I've been in this church toting, it felt like a hundred pound knapsack on my back. One on the front, I couldn't breathe. But I had to lay it down. Lay it down. Because there is a way maker. But I got to let him make the way. Not me. I don't make the way. But I know the one that does. I know the one that when it don't seem to be a way to make it, he'll pour the river. He'll rain manna from heaven. He'll break a drug addiction. He'll restore what has been destroyed. That's my God. That's my God. If you hold in this baggage, if it's your child, if it's your spouse, let it go. Trust Him to be that way maker. Because it ain't us. It sounds good, but the one we're worshiping and praising is the way maker. Don't waste the time to hold on to this baggage but come let it go. Come let it go this morning. We're going to sing it again. But come let it go. Don't hold on to it any longer. Don't hold on to it any longer. Put it in his hands. Put it in his hands this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
trust you. God trust you with their lives, Lord God, today. God to put it all in your care. God not to put it in the hands of man, but to put it in yours. God to give you the glory. God to give you the honor, Lord. God, we praise you, God, right now. We praise you for your spirit, Lord. God, we praise you for breaking the chains this morning. God, we praise you for this breakthrough. God, that you're producing God in these lives, Lord. God, we pray. God, that you would move, Lord, so that you can. God, we know that you are here. God, we know that you're in the midst, Lord. God, we praise you, God, today. God, we honor you, God, today. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. God, you are real. God, you are here. God, you are in the midst, Lord. God, there's some hungry people. God, that needs to feed from your table. God, that needs to see, Lord, what you are for themselves, Lord. God, to taste, Lord. God, the spirit of Jesus Christ, Lord. God, is alive today. God, I pray, God, that you move on. God, in a special way today. God, we thank you, Lord. God, we worship you today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's a way maker. Thank you, Jesus. He's a way maker. Give God a cheer. Give him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, bless thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was at a meeting Saturday. Our state bishop was there um, thank you, Jesus. Uh, last Saturday and instructing some ministers. And he told these uh, ministers, one day they'll be pastors, and he said, don't begin your service with an offering. I didn't know churches did that, but he said, don't begin your services with an offering. He said, in fact, don't even begin your services asking uh, with, with prayer request. He said, begin your service honoring God. Amen. He said, because he comes first. Amen. You see what happens when you put God first? Then we can bring our needs to God. I actually have a model that I, I follow in my prayer life. P-R-A-Y. Praise, repent, ask, and yield. It's very simple. Begin with praising God. Amen. And then I don't know about you, maybe you never have to repent. <laughs> I say, oh God, forgive me. Yeah. What I did, I shouldn't have done. And what I didn't do, I should have done. Yeah. And then begin to ask. And then finally, you yield. You yield. So I have a couple of special needs I'd like to bring to your attention. James McCaffson was with us earlier, but uh, he had to leave. Uh, James has been very sick, and he's been diagnosed with an illness, and he has to have a, a liver transplant. And so um, he's trusting God. He's putting his faith and his confidence in God. But he's very sick and very weak, and he's trying to do the best he can. So um, he, he, needs, he needs prayer. So I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Uh, Molly, would you take that mic to Simba? I'm not prepared you, Simba. But uh, you've been through a transplant. It's a different kind of transplant. But uh, he needs prayer. He's actually talking to one of his daughters as a possible donor. And you've been through that. So uh, I'm just going to ask all of you to bow your heads. Simba, would you lift up James and his family in prayer uh, that God would help them? Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. This is one of those times in the life of individuals and families where you, the person that's going through this for a long is you and God. Lord God, I can feel the high of James right now. So God, bless him, Lord God. Touch his family, touch the people around him, touch the doctors, the aides, the nurses, and specialists that come to help him. Just minister him in love, Lord God. And touch James how he knows that you are with him through the whole process. Amen. Even though we, or people like me, have been through that process, may not feel it sometimes, but that's when you carry us. And Lord God, you are carrying us and right now. You are with him right now, Lord God. And you are with his family, Lord God. And you are with the nurses and the doctors. And everyone is going to touch him and be in his life, Lord God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus. Let's just touch him right now. Jesus. Touch the people, touch the houses, the nurses, the doctors. Even the people that walk down the hall that come past. It's the little things that we you really bless us in, Lord God. It's just a little word of encouragement that people get. These times that they really, really need it, Lord God. So touch them, Lord God. We trust yes. and we believe in you. Yes. And we know that right now, in the midst of all of this, in the midst of
a right with him. Right? Yes. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Lead to the trust of God. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Jesus name. Can you say amen? amen. Continue to pray for James. Um, Jenny and Terry, uh, Molly, I need your help again. Jenny and Terry need some pr prayer. Uh, she's been hurting so bad in one leg she can't hardly walk. And uh, Terry wrenched his back. So uh, uh, they're... They, they really need some help. So, I haven't prepared anybody for this, and you can say no. Uh, Kayla? Kayla says no. You don't pray for Jenny and Terry? Cody? Would you pray for Jenny and Terry if she brings you this microphone? Sure, sure. He's a brave young man. He's a brave young man. You're a brave young lady, too. Okay, you're going to pray while he prays, aren't you? I know, darling. Just pray in your own way. God will touch them. Thank you, Cody. Jesus, we just ask you to pray. First of all, God, we just praise you. Yeah. God, you are worthy of all of our praise, all yeah. of the honor, and all of the glory. Yeah. We ask you, Lord, that you, your spirit, your healing spirit, God, just be with Jenny and Terry today, God. Bless them and move and find a way in their house today, Lord. It's a lot easier to pray when everybody else prays, isn't it, Kate? It's a lot easier to pray when everybody else prays. <laughs> uh, thank the Lord. Um, Simba, somebody told me they felt like you really needed prayer today. Just, just that uh, they felt like we just need to pray for you. So I know, I know you won't mind. Um, wow. So Molly, you're gonna find out with that microphone. And uh, come this way, darling. And uh, Mary Jo, God knows the need. But uh, uh, someone feels like Simba needs a touch from the Lord. Uh, Simba got some news from Duke. Uh, actually, he's going to get his third year booster shot, right? So we thank God for that. But he's been through a long, uh, quite a ways. And I ask uh, Mary Jo, would you just pray for Simba that God will touch him and bless him and use him? God, we love you. We praise you. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. You are so awesome. Jesus. So awesome, God. And Lord, I want to thank you personally for Simba and the blessing he is to me, God. He's a blessing to our entire church, Lord. And Lord, every time I hear him play that the tambourine, Lord, it just touches my heart, God. It inspires me, Lord, and I thank you for it, Lord. And for me too, Lord. They're, they're precious, God. And Lord, I want you to touch Simba this morning, God. I don't know what's going on in his life, Lord. You do, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, in all of your ultimate wisdom and knowledge, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you know exactly what Simba needs this morning. And I pray, God, your blessings upon him, Lord. God, whatever it is, I pray support his every need, Lord. His every need, God, whatever that need might be, God, for the, from the abundance of heaven this morning, I pray, pour out your blessings on him and supply those needs, Jesus. Take care of him, God. Just take care of him, God. We love him, Lord, and we want the very best for him. Lord, we want him to have everything that he needs, dear Jesus. We want him to lack for nothing. Lord, I know that you want the same. Lord, I know that I love him, God. But I know that as much as I love him, you love him even yes. more. Oh, God, just take care of it, Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? I have one more prayer before you're seated, if you don't mind. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Can we mention you? Yes. Yes. Uh, Kelly, I appreciate you obeying the Lord and coming and, and praying. I want you to know it's always appropriate to pray in God's house. In fact, Jesus himself said, uh, my house shall be called a house of prayer. A house of prayer. So, uh, Kelly, I appreciate you obeying the Lord. That's what we have to do. And uh, when Scott says you have a burden, I mean, we all come with burdens. And this is a good place to just say, Lord, take. I can't take it, Lord. Amen. 
And then right there in the middle of our weakness, he becomes strong. Would you bow your heads? Kelly, I'd like to pray for you in the name of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the master of this universe, the one who can do anything. I pray for my brother. Oh, Lord, you said take my yoke upon me. Lord, that means you're going to be right there beside us carrying these loads. And the good news, Lord, is you have the strength to carry it all. So I pray that you would help him. Help him to just leave that burden with you, Lord. Oh, God, I pray that the peace that passes understanding would just flood through his spirit. Lord, I, I thank you for Kelly. I pray that you would bless him, Jesus, because you love him so much, because he's special and precious to you, Jesus. Oh, God, Lord, touch him not for his sake and our sake, but for your sake, Jesus. We'll give you the glory for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, John Quilliam, can you raise your hand just a minute? John? John, raise your hand, John. John Quilliam, some of you know him, some of you don't. John, I believe your wife's name is Lois, is that right? Your wife's name is Lois? Okay. Oh, he doesn't have his hearing aid again. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ray, I'm going to ask you to go next to John. Just tell him we're going to pray for his wife. Would you do that? Tell him we're praying for his wife just a minute. Ma used to have that microphone. Oh, she's on the she's on the move today. <laughs> yeah, if you just tell him we're gonna pray for his wife, okay? Okay, his wife's name is Lois. Uh, if you'll take that to Sister Glenna. Glenna, uh, Lois needs a touch from the Lord for healing. She's she would love to be here, but she's not able to be here. So I wonder if uh, you'd bow your heads. And Glenna's going to take that microphone to, to Glenna. And she's going to pray for Lois and John. Father, we just thank you for your presence here this morning. Thank you that you're a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, and a light in our darkness. Thank God, you, Jesus. We just praise you for that this morning. God, I just pray for John's wife today. Touch her in the name of Jesus. God, you know what's going on there. And you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So we're asking you for complete healing, but you'll do above and beyond that. God, you know, and we're trusting you, Lord, to touch her in the name of Jesus. And that you would touch John as well, that you would just minister to his mind, his body, his spirit, his heart, Lord, and that you would just strengthen him. God, we're praying for healing to move into this household in the name of Jesus. Praise you and thank you because we know, as Molly said, when we say it, you hear it and you start working. And I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're going to pray for your pastor, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. When I was uh, preparing for the message today, um, I was in my office and I began to seek God because I had an idea about what I wanted to do. And and, uh, but sometimes the Lord has another idea. And so I began to seek the Lord and I said, God, you know, it's all about you and you know best. And, and I, want to, I want to yield to you and I want to surrender to you. And the power of God just fell on me. And, I, and, I, and I'm like, really? That's, that's what you want me to do? And, and uh, so I'm going to obey the Lord. Somebody, somebody should say that. Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. That's a good thing to do. Amen. So... Uh, I believe it was the elder Jack Cates that used to say, uh, I'll preach fast, you listen fast, and we'll go home merrily." He said, <laughs> I'll preach fast, you listen fast. Well, I'll do, I'll do my best, but I think God wants you to hear this. I want to talk to you briefly. Does anybody know what briefly means when a preacher says? <laughs> I want to talk to you about a true compass. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp. Are you with me, Sister Glenna? Thy word, thank you. Glenna's busy back there. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to talk to you about a true compass. Years ago, I think it was 2014, I was uh, reading something by Dennis and Barbara Rainey. They are great authors. If you ever see their names, read what they write. It's really good. And they have a little devotional thing called Moments With You. And here's what they said. 2014, I believe, is when they wrote this, so that's what, like seven years ago. They said, the biblical values that built our great nation once passed on from each generation to the next as a national treasure 
are being questioned and dismissed. Now that's the truth. That's the truth. As a people, we might be healthier, but we're not happier. We are drenched in knowledge. You can find out just about anything you want to know, just like that. But it may not be right. You know what I mean? I mean, you can find out anything somebody says about anything, just like that. That doesn't mean it's right. But we are, we are drenched in knowledge, but parched for wisdom. Materially, we are wealthy, but we suffer a profound poverty of the soul. Dennis Rainey said, the longer I live, the more I see that our nation needs a spiritual reformation in its inner spirit. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the state of the family. As a result, never before have we seen such deterioration in our homes. Never before has the marriage covenant been viewed with such contempt by a generation. Never before have parents been ridiculed for seeking to raise children with biblical values. Never before have so many Christians laughed and shrugged their shoulders or did nothing about sin. Never before has materialism been so flagrantly embraced over relationships. Never before has the family been in such need of a new legacy. Never before has the definition of marriage been altered to allow for two people of the same sex. The national, the pivotal national issue today is not crime. It's not the pandemic. It's not welfare. It's not health care. It's not education. It's not politics. It's not the economy, the media, the environment, racial issues. Dennis Reedy said in his article, the pivotal issue today is the spiritual and moral condition of individual men and women, husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, and families. That's the issue. In other words, instead of looking around for where the problem is, I got a good place for you to look. The mirror. Look in the mirror. In fact, Mary Jo, I brought a mirror with me today. Look right here in the mirror. If you look in here, you will see yourself. You see, God loves us so much. You believe that? Say amen. He loves us so much, he's given us a true compass. A true compass to guide us through our lives. It is the word of God. And now, Sister Glenn, I'm back on that scripture again. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Anybody here ever been lost? You can get lost with a GPS. I was with Ron Harris the other day going somewhere, and the GPS was telling us where to go. And uh, Ron and I were going down the road, and we saw where we wanted to go over here. And when we got out the road, it told us to go the other way. Guess what Ron did? He went the exact way the GPS said to go. And the first thing that lady said, it was a lady's voice. First thing that lady said was, make a U-turn. I told Ron, I said, I saw it right over there. You couldn't miss it. It was Liberty University Stadium. It's huge. But the GPS said, go the other way. Well, God's given us a true compass. We need something to help us to get to where we are, to get to where we need to be going. Because I got a news flash for you. There's not a whole lot of options. They're spending eternity in heaven or there's going to hell. Amen. That's it. Amen. This isn't a multiple choice life. This isn't a multiple choice experience. For me and for you, for our loved ones, for everyone, it's one or the other. We're on a journey to get there. We need a compass. So what are you using to navigate through life? If, we let it, if you're not using the Bible, what are you using? If you're using your feelings, you're gonna be all over the place. Because today I feel a certain way. Tomorrow I feel a certain way. You might not have felt like coming to church today. It, and I don't want you to say if you didn't. But I want you to know, if you woke up this morning and you think, I don't know about going to church, then you are one of those I was praying for when I woke up this morning. When I woke up this morning, I said, Lord, help that person that's waking up this morning. I said, I don't know about church. God, give them a desire to be here. Make a way. Just, 
just, just, just help them to be here. So I was praying for you. So we can't let our feelings light our path. You're going to be all over the place. Maybe you have been. Maybe you wonder why am I all, all over the place? Because you just let your feelings be your compass. Because your feelings lie to you so much of the time. Amen. You ever been upset at somebody because of something they didn't say and you found out they didn't really didn't say it? Or they certainly didn't mean it? I've said to my wife before, when you said such and such, she said, no, I didn't. So being the wise man I am, I said, well, that's what you meant. <laughs> and she's like, I, I didn't say it. I didn't mean it. She, you know, sometimes our feelings lie to us. How about this? Everybody hates me. Nobody cares about me. That person's angry at me. You know, our feelings will lie to us. The enemy will get in there and work with us. How about this? If we navigate by the approval of other people, we're going to be up and down all the time. You can't please everyone. It's just not going to work. Do you think that's the job of a pastor? Everybody tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. How's that going to work? It's just, it's just not going to work, is it? It doesn't work that way. So we have to have something to guide us. It can't be our feelings. It can't be the approval of other people. But... If we let the word of God be a lamp to our feet and our light to our path, we'll be able to see where we're going. Now, I've shared with you all uh, before, I think, that I have this condition called benign positional vertigo. In other words, I've got to find my feet before I get up. It's actually improving a little bit. I don't know, I don't know why. It seems better. It used to be if I got out of the bed in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I had to grab my phone and turn on my light. But I guess there's a... There's a bright light behind the house. That's probably what it is, Glenn. And it's shining through there. But, but, but I've learned that if I turn on the light in the bathroom, and when I get ready to leave, what I do is I turn off the light, I close my eyes for a minute before I move. Just close my eyes. And then when I open them, I get used to the, the, the darkness. Well, there's a little bit of light, you see. Sometimes, church, what we need to do is we need to close our eyes to all this chatter, all this noise, all this interference, all these feelings, all this approval of people, all these other things that are trying to be our compass. We need to open our eyes and we need to see the light. Amen. This is the only thing that's going to get you there. What are you going to let be your wisdom, your uh, compass, your own wisdom? Are oh, you such a wise guy? No, we're really not. We need a compass. People that don't accept the word of God as the compass, as the authority for what is right and what is wrong, I say, well, what is your authority? What about, what, tell me some things you think are wrong. And if they tell me I think this is wrong, I say, based on what? See, there's a, there's a movement going on in our world today. And that movement says there is no right or wrong. It's all relative. It's whatever I want. I don't want any restrictions. I want to do what I want to do. I want to think, hold on church, I want to think what I want to think, and are you ready? Are you sitting down? And I want to be what I want to be. I'm just going to say it. This is what I feel like I am. Therefore I am. doesn't change a thing. Maybe I should go to an NFL stadium and say I'm an NFL player. Let me in for free and pay me all that money. I'm not an NFL player. Maybe I want to say I'm, I'm uh, tall and dark and handsome. <laughs> You're two of those things. <laughs> My grandson said two out of three is not bad. <laughs> I'm not, we're not talking about which two it is. You know, that doesn't change a thing. But that's what the world says. I want to do what I want to do. I want to think what I want to think. I want to be what I want to be. And I want you to celebrate it. You see, many in this world today do not accept this true compass. That's not a new thing. They didn't accept Jesus when he walked on this earth, did he? Listen to God's word, John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning was what? The Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, verse 3 and 4. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. That's John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And look at verse 5. It's talking about Jesus. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We sang this morning, He is here. He was. He is. He's right here in the middle of us. But sometimes people don't recognize Him. 
He was there in the flesh. People didn't even recognize him. Because the Bible, church, this is the true compass. The inspired word of God. That means God breathed. It's the foundation. This is the foundation of the Christian faith. If we're going to ignore this and say it doesn't matter, let's all go home. But if we stand upon it, we have a firm foundation. If we use it as our compass, it's better than any GPS. This is the true compass. This is how we know that Jesus came in the flesh. This is how we know about the crucifixion. This is how we know about the resurrection. Since all intelligent faith in the supernatural rests ultimately upon the divine origin, the inspiration, and the infallible authority of the Bible as the book of God, it's only natural that this book becomes the very center of both the attack and the defense of the whole system of Christianity. This book is under attack. Therefore, here's what we need, church. We must have an intelligent, rational, unshakable confidence in the Word of God. Amen. We must believe it is divine in origin. We must believe it is inspired of the Holy Spirit. And we must believe it is a safe guide for belief and a sure pattern for practice. Amen. Church, we need to stand upon this. It's not popular opinion. You can let that be your compass, popular opinion. That changes all the time. Traditions can even change. But the Word of God is true. It's pure. It's strong. Now, doesn't that sound like, a little, doesn't sound like I'm being a little strong? Some might say it's okay. Well, here's the thing, church. We should be tolerant. Some might say amen. amen. Loving. Say amen. amen. Accepting. Say amen. And forgiving to people. Amen. We should be. We're children of God. Filled with His love and mercy. We've been forgiven. And we should forgive. He is going to forgive us as we forgive others. So we should be tolerant, loving, accepting, and forgiving to people. But, next slide, Glenn. That doesn't mean we should compromise God's word. Amen. We can love people accept people and forgive people and be tolerant of people. As a matter of fact, here's the thing. If you love somebody, you don't want them to be hurt. I said there's only two choices, heaven or hell. If you love people, you don't want them to go to hell. People say, just leave me alone and let me do what I want to do. Why are you, why are you trying to show me a different compass? Why are you trying to show me something that steers me away from what I want to do? And we say, well, I love you. I still accept you as someone I love. And I'm willing to forgive you for anything. But that doesn't mean God's word changes because of you. Just because it's somebody you love, that doesn't change the word of God. Because the scripture says, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration means God breathed. And is profitable for doctrine, for, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. See, this what a compass will do, if you watch it, if you get off course, it will tell you that's the way you gotta go. You know, the needle will change. I remember when we lived in Colorado Springs, it was easy, directions were easy. All you had to do was look at Pike's Peak. It's hard to miss. Somebody say why. Go ahead. Because it's 14,110 feet. And the city is 6864. So the city is less than 7,000 feet. And the mountain peak is 14,110. It's hard to miss. Pike's Peak was west. So all you had to do was say, that's west. So that's going to be east. That's going to be north. That's just, it was simple. In fact, when I first came here, that was one of my challenges. I asked somebody, I was a young private in the army. I said, how do you tell directions in this part of the world? <laughs> Anybody want to guess what they, what they told me? Thank you. The sun rises in the east and sets to the west. And I said, what about a cloudy day? <laughs> yeah, you're, out of luck. you're out of luck. Here's what Paul said. Paul said about this. Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. 
That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have what? Hope. Hope. Listen to it again. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Tony Evans, some of you know his name. He, uh, my, I think this was seven or eight years ago. He asked this question. He said, why is the world so messed up? <laughs> you know, I told you earlier, we need to look at ourselves, right? And here's where we need to look. We need to look in the Word of God. Because here's the way it works. I know, Tony Evans says, I know we want to save our nation. We want to win back our republic. I know we want to see the transformation of our culture. But if God can't even get his own kids to fear him and follow the true compass, the Word of God, how can we get the culture to take him seriously? When Christians start living up to the Word of God, people are going to take us seriously. As a matter of fact, there's one key thing, if you're reading this book, that tells us how other people are going to know we belong to him. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have what? Love one to another. Someone said recently that Christians are the most divided religion on earth. He said, name any other religion that has so many different factions, divisions, denominations, and, and in many cases, each one believing they're right and everybody else is wrong. All to honor the Son of God who prayed to the Father, said, I pray, Father, that they might be O-N-E, not W-O-N. <laughs> Jesus prayed that we would all be one. He wants us to be united. I got news for you in heaven. I don't believe it's going to be a black heaven and a white heaven. Amen. And a Baptist heaven and a Church of God heaven. And a, a conservative heaven and a liberal he heaven and a Republican and a, and a Democrat and independent. It's, that's not the way it works. Why is it that way down here? Well, here's the way it works. We need to look at ourselves. Use this as a compass. We need to say, my follow on this compass. Use this as a mirror. Because you see, if you have a messed up person, then what happens is you have a messed up family. And if you have a messed up family, you get a bunch of messed up families together and you get a messed up church. You get a bunch of messed up churches, you have a messed up community. If you have messed up communities, you have a messed up city, messed up county, messed up state, messed up country, and a messed up world. Here's the thing we need to learn today. Nations are never changed until people are changed. Look at somebody and say, you're a people. I'm talking about us. The true hope for genuine change in the heart lies only in the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Through him, lives can be rebuilt. Through him, families and nations can be reformed. It's simple. Let's just turn it around. What if instead of having messed up people, what if we just looked at it this way? We have redeemed people. We have forgiven people. We have hurting people who have let Jesus help them. What if, what if this? What if instead of being people attacking each other, what if we were all forgiving and kind? How about let's just leave it at kind? What if you have kind people? You know what kind people form? Kind families. Kind families form kind churches. Kind churches form kind communities and cities and counties and states and countries and eventually the world. We need to follow the true compass, the Word of God. The psalmist said, Psalm 39, verse 6 and 7, We are merely moving shadows and all are busy rushing into nothing. You ever been frustrated? Seems like the harder you go, the behind you get. Two steps forward, one step back. The psalmist said, we're merely moving shadows. All our busy rushing ends in nothing. We heap up wealth, not knowing who will spend it. And so, Lord, the psalmist said, where do I put my hope? My only hope is in you. The Bible is the true compass. For those of you who think this sounds a little hard, and think that this sounds a little judgmental, I got an answer for you, and that is God will take care of that. 
I'm not worried about the judgment business. In fact, listen to what Jesus said about that in John 12, verse 46. Jesus said about himself, I come as a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Verse 47. And if any man hear my words and believe not, listen to what Jesus said, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world. You know why Jesus came? To save the world. He doesn't want us to be out judging everybody. He wants us to say, we want to save you. Let's love them into, into Jesus. Love them. Amen. That person who is deep in sin belongs in this pew. That person who's living a lifestyle that, that is contrary to this word belongs in this pew. Yes. They are welcome here. They are welcome here. You know, I had someone stop in the lobby one time and ask me, can I come to church? And I said, sure, welcome. He said, thank you. I've been to three churches today. On a Sunday morning, he said, they told me I was not welcome. And I say, shame on churches that do that. Because everyone is welcome here. That's, what, that's, my, that's my vision for this church, a church where everyone will be welcome. That if this church will be full of hurting people that help other hurting people, because that's what we are. We've all been hurt. We've all had loads. We've all been through things. We can help others. So Jesus said, I didn't come to judge the world, but to save the world. Listen to what he said in verse 48. He that rejecteth me, Jesus said, and receiveth not my words, he hath one that judgeth him. There's a judgment day coming. Let's leave that to God. Jesus said, the word, have I, that, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. The Bible, the true compass. In other words, Jesus said, this is, this is the way that gets you there. And if people don't follow this way, they're not going to make it. Do you remember what Jesus said about being the way? He said, I am the way. The truth. The life. No man comes to the Father through me. No exceptions. No exceptions. See, it's a straight and narrow way. The Bible, the true compass, the Word of God, divine truth. It's not passionate belief. That's not what's going to get us to the right place. Do you know there are people who don't believe the Bible who are much more passionate than we are? I mean, they dedicate their lives. They give their lives for what they believe in. They sacrifice their lives. Sometimes they sacrifice their children. They give everything because of what they believe in. They're passionate about it. That doesn't mean it's true. Not our upbringing. Maybe you were brought, us, brought up a certain way. There are people who were brought up a certain way, and they hold to that no matter what, even if it's contrary to the Word of God. Not even tradition. Traditions can be good, but just because it's tradition, just because we've always done it, doesn't make it right. Not our presuppositions. In other words, not just because we've always thought about it that way, but the true compass is the Word of God. The Word of God. Do you remember uh, when the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness? They didn't have to do that, you know. If they'd gone in when God said to go in, instead of saying, oh, we don't think we can do it, they wouldn't have wandered so long. You remember they got hungry and God gave them something from heaven? What was it? Manna. You know, you know what's interesting is how much did he give them? Just enough for the day, except Saturday. They got, I mean, except one day they got to collect twice, okay? So they didn't have to do any on the Sabbath. Well, you know, when I read that, I thought about the Word of God. Because I think it's in John chapter 6. Jesus talks about, you know, I am the bread of life. You know, and, and here it is. We need to taste this and, and get this in us, you know. So here's my advice. This is the true compass. You need to get it in your spirit. And here's the way to do it. Treat it like manna. Don't gorge yourself. Don't just, don't just read, 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 read. You don't know what you read. Sometimes it's good to take a chapter... And just read it every day. Try that sometime. Take, sometimes I do this. I take 1 Corinthians 13. You might know what that chapter is about. Love. I dare you. I dare you. In September, try this. Read 1 Corinthians 13 every day. Every day. Every day of the month. It won't take long. You just get it in your spirit. It's like manna. God's given us something. Hasn't he given us something wonderful? Would you stand with me this morning? If you'll agree with me, we need to allow the Word of God to be our true compass. This is what's going to get us there.
Not your favorite news channel. Not your favorite political party. Because boy, do things change. Not your favorite leader. This is what's going to get us there. The Word of God. We bow your heads. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. I thank you for your Word. I'm in love with you. And therefore, I'm in love with the Word of God. Help us to hide your Word in our heart that we would not sin against you. Help us to let your word be a compass that gets us from where we are to where you want us to be. Not just our ultimate goal of being with you in glory, but day to day. Lord, let us get the word in us in such a way that it becomes a compass. That that is what helps us decide what to do and what not to do. Oh God, we're not looking for handwriting on the wall. You've already given us this word. Oh God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Lord, when I read your word, I see that it tells us about a God who loves us, about a people who are lost, and about a Savior who will rescue us. That sums it up. And then, Lord, people ask you, well, what, what, do we, what should we do? What should we do? You made it pretty plain. Love me and love others. Lord, that should be our true compass. Help us to do that, Jesus. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, for... Uh, letting your word speak to us, God. I believe that it is spoken to the right person. I believe it is spoken to their heart in the right way. And I believe this is the right time for it. For him. So help us, Lord. Lord, this week as we face decisions, uh, may we ask ourselves, what does the word have to say about this? How, how can I let the word guide me to know what to do about this? What to say about this? How to act about this? Let the word be our God, Jesus. Do it because you love us, Master. Keep us safe, Lord. I want to take a moment and just say thank you, Jesus. I thank you for blessing the Martin family this morning. I know that Stephanie had to take her children to be tested for COVID, and the tests were negative. And we just say thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers as we call on you today, Lord. Oh, God, go with us. Go before us. Work through us, Jesus. Because you love us and as you do these things, we'll say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the church say amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Be blessed in the name of Jesus.